guys, what is up? My name is Jurocraft and we are finally back on Kingdoms of Greymane. I know it's been absolutely ages since my last video. I have no excuse. I've been slightly lazy over the summer. Not to mention we have a whole new distraction. His name is Kovu. Yeah, I don't know what to say. It seems like every other Minecraft YouTuber has a cat now for some reason. But besides that, I do have to say I have this inner spark of determination to try and make Kingdoms of Greymane the most epic medieval fantasy Minecraft world ever made. Which of course is quite the statement and it's going to be quite the challenge not to mention we still have a really long way to go so for those of you who don't know this project started way back in 2012 or, or 13 I don't know sometimes I forget but every now and again I like to jump in and make some major updates for you guys to enjoy and yes you can now download over 12 years of my work including all my Minecraft projects over on my patreon so with that said let's begin today's adventure Now in the last episode, we finished off by building this absolutely gigantic cathedral which now basically towers over the entire city. Obviously, this church desperately needs some attention when it comes to the interior. And I kind of regret making the church this big. I mean, there is just a lot of empty space and obviously there's a lot of work to do. But before we get into the epic stuff, I do want to make some minor changes across the entire Kingdoms of Grameen project. Stuff which I think just desperately need to be fixed and expanded on. So apart from going around the city decorating the smaller, emptier spaces that still needed some attention, I've also tried to finally finish off the military quarters, just expanding on the training grounds and making sure that everything is accessible in survival mode. I mean, you can always just build your way up, but that just kind of makes everything look ugly. So ladders and pathways are going to be extremely important, as well as attention to detail. I mean, I seriously want to make this project as perfect as possible. Now alongside the fortress, I've also built a brand new secret entrance which basically leads down into the undercity sewers. And yes, the city also has a working sewage system, just in case you missed out on a previous episode. But this entrance now leads through one of the main sewer pipes, and seeing as we're now chilling in the sewers, we might as well make a few changes here too. So I built a few more decorations, added some better lighting, and also, once again, a few more ladders, because there was pretty much no way of getting out of the sewage water. I mean, realistically, you probably wouldn't survive in this water to begin with but heck it's minecraft and we need a way out maybe mojang could add some green colored poison water which i thought was a really cool idea maybe some crocodiles too i don't know and by the way, I know the ceiling of this cave still needs a lot of work and it's honestly been bugging me for a really long time now. It is just a complete mess, but we do still need to update to caves and cliffs, so I think we're just gonna have to wait for some of the newer blocks. So let's exit the sewers for now and move over to the back of the fortress which was recently destroyed after building the new headquarters which features this new gigantic map of the city. I've also added some glowstone behind the map because it was just way too dark and obviously this works a lot better. But the worst thing of all has to be the infamous black shadow glitch that has literally decided to plague the entire Kingdoms of Grameen project. And I mean almost every single slab and stair block has pretty much glitched out causing these black shadows to appear all over the map. In most cases it's not really a big deal but I absolutely hate the look of it and it looks even worse without shaders on. So I had to spend who knows how many hours basically destroying my entire project and undoing the damages just to get rid of them. There's only one way to describe this experience. <clears throat> it freaking sucks. I have to say though, in some ways it was actually worth it because I ended up transforming a lot of the old content by redesigning the towers and completely fixing the main entrance into the mountain, which was quite outdated anyway and definitely needed a lot of work. I mean so much for minor updates, but as always I got a little carried away. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the main entrance before the transformation, and this is what it looks like now. From a distance, I know it's kind of hard to tell just how much went into this, but if we do take a closer look, you can see that the previous design had a bunch of areas that were just completely destroyed. And obviously now I've fixed all the errors as well as updated the designs, so I think this makes for a pretty decent improvement. Right guys, so with that finally out the way, I think it's time we focus on some of the major updates. So if we take a look at the map, this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. Obviously, there's still tons of empty space that needs to be sorted out, so I think we should seriously focus on finishing the left side of the city once and for all. So right above the trade district, I've decided to expand upwards above the market area and start building this massive auction house. Honestly, I'm just trying to find ways to expand on the city with unique buildings rather than just copy pasting the same house all over the place. Trust me, I've done this in the past and it just doesn't look good. So for now, I just want to make this area feel packed with houses, shops and just places you can trade. Now obviously this is a pretty massive building with a lot of empty space to cover so it definitely took a good few hours to decorate this entire building as well as the surrounding areas but we do have tons of different features, decorations, bridges, shops, I mean there is definitely a lot to explore but one thing I really wanted to do was actually to relocate the clock tower. I pretty much transformed the old clock tower design, but trust me, I honestly think it would make much more sense to have this massive grand clock tower right on top of the auction house. I think this view is just so much better and the city is really starting to come together. Not to mention this clock tower is much more visible from different areas of the city. To be honest, I didn't really like the old version anyway, so for me, this makes for a huge upgrade compared to the previous design. Now, if you haven't noticed already, there's also this small alleyway which could lead into the mountain. Now, I already have some crazy plans for this, and I've already named it the Dead Mines Tram. The idea is to build this huge underground mine track system that could potentially lead to new islands outside of Greymane. This idea is pretty far-fetched, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. For now, we're going to have to save this idea, so you know, subscribe! The good news is that the left side of the city is almost complete, aside from some interiors and of course this platform on the left side of the auction house. Now I've thought about this for a while and I've decided the best option was to expand on the castle and build a small prison area. That way anyone caught stealing in the market could instantly be thrown in jail. Now I don't plan on making this the main prison because I do have plans on building a much more epic dungeon somewhere deep under the mountain but for now these holding cells will be just about enough to finish this entire district. Okay, so at this point, I really want to take a look at the updated map, just because I seem to have this obsession with seeing the progress from this perspective. It honestly just looks insane to me. But guys, I know I can't hold back any longer. I think it's time we finally tackle this gigantic cathedral. Now, I have honestly been dreading this part. I mean, there is just so much work to do inside this church. I think the best option for now is just to start by tidying up the walls as well as the ceiling, just to give us a better guideline so we know exactly exactly what we're working with. Then we're going to start dividing the cathedral up into different sections, just building some pillars and archways to hold up the church. I did actually mess up at this point because I kind of noticed the archways were pretty much just blocking the view, so I did get rid of them later on. But at this point, it's just a matter of finding the best ways to detail the walls with some fancy looking shapes and patterns. But believe it or not, we're going to try and keep things simple, because a lot of people, they kind of do stuff like this, where they detail the walls with a bunch of scattered blocks and call it a day. And I'm just going to be honest, I absolutely absolutely hate this. I'd rather keep things tidy and make sure that all the blocks are well connected. But guys, this is just down to my preference, so don't feel too bad about it. I just think this way of building is a bit less messy and less affects my OCD, let's just say. The good news is that this cathedral is now fully detailed and all that's left to do is add in those final decorations. 
So we're going to finally finish this off with some benches right down the middle of the church and of course we also have to build the beautiful church altar. But for some reason I still thought that the cathedral looked a little bit empty so I decided to also build one giant cross hanging down from the center dome. I thought this was a really cool idea and it kind of helps fill up that empty looking ceiling. Now a really useful thing was the fact that there was just enough space inside the main pillars to build a staircase leading up to all the different levels of the cathedral. So I've pretty much made everything accessible and on top of that I've actually built a bunch of different rooms for all the different people of the church. Everything from smaller bedrooms to storage rooms and even a larger bedroom for maybe the Pope. I mean, I don't know, there was just a lot more empty space than I thought. I even ended up building a small church library which I guess we could call the church archive where they keep all the old religious books I suppose. There's even enough space to build a crypt right under the cathedral but once again I kind of want to wait for the caves and cliffs update so that we can add those glorious candles. Remember guys, you can now get your hands on all my work over on my Patreon. So thank you so much for your support and I will catch you in the next one.